up guys, Alec Mac 101 and welcome to a Ohio outside unboxing. It's been honestly a little bit since I filmed here. I'm back home in Columbus for like a week and a half to see my family and spent Easter with them. And I ordered this collection from somebody. It's been a little bit since I've done a collection video. I've tried to be ordering a lot of unboxings, but unfortunately I have not seen that many collections for sale. So I am looking in and ramping up for videos for the spring and summer, but it's been a little bit slow. Thanks for sticking with it. Up first is something that's actually not airsoft, but I think you guys will absolutely love this. So I'm pretty sure almost all airsofters are also gamers too, or like 95% of airsofters are also gamers. But I ordered a Battle Beaver Customs controller about probably about two months ago. I ordered it hoping it would get here for my birthday in February. They had some stuff that was out of stock. And so I custom built this controller. This is the first time I've seen it in person. Obviously I saw it when I built it, but oh my gosh. This is the custom Alec Mac 111 Battle Beaver Customs controller. And I actually, if you can see right there, I'll show some close-ups, but I put my Alec Mac 101 logo right there on the button. I got like the old school 360 joysticks because that's kind of the system that I grew up on. I got some super, super quick triggers. These are like the smart triggers on them. I really like how those joysticks feel. I went with the orange face up top. I, I'm a little, and just honestly, it's funny kind of timing Easter wise, but this is a very interesting color scheme. I went pink, like a matte pink with the buttons because I think they look really cool. I obviously, this definitely looks like Alec Mac one on one colors. I thought these were a little bit more same color as this one. Obviously they are a little bit, but if this is not Alec Mac 101 controller, I don't know what is. This thing feels so, so, so good. So if you want to play with me below, I play a lot more Overwatch competitively right now. So either that or I do play a little bit of Cold War as well, but I have my links in the description. I'm thinking about starting streaming. I really want to. I've had a few of you guys be like, yo, you need to start streaming. Um, and so I'm thinking about it. I just ha didn't have a ton of fun with Cold War at the beginning of the game, but I've actually played a lot of competitive Overwatch now. I'm like diamond and plat for the tank and DPS, which is what I play. So some of you know what that is. Some of you have no idea, but let's get on to the next part. All right, quick little airsoft thing before we get into the collection unboxing. This was sent to me by my buddy at Angle Four Grips. He's a younger kid that's getting into making custom suppressors. And so he made like a 3D custom printed suppressor. So I told him I'd do it in an unboxing video. He's like, hey man, can I send you something and you show this off? I really liked the pictures of how they looked. You can see right there. It's kind of got like a cool hex pattern. It's actually pretty rigid. I was kind of surprised. Um, by, when I saw it, I wasn't I wasn't sure that 3D printed material was that like solid, but this looks like it really hold up to anything that you're trying to do airsoft wise. I think it has the counterclockwise threads. Yeah, it looks like it's got counterclockwise there. It says V8 Pro 14 millimeter counterclockwise. Actually feels really, really good. I like it a lot. So if you wanna check those out, link in the description below. I love it when you guys start new stuff and then send me stuff. This is an awesome way that I can do this, that I get something and I get to mess around with it and I get to give you guys a kind of a shout out for the videos because I think that's awesome. So if you do have stuff you wanna send me, um, I would love to do a little unboxing of it or do a little review of it or something. So let me know, hit me up on Instagram or Facebook or hop up. Alrighty boys, this is what you're here for. So I got a good old LG monitor, a uh, 34 inch TV. Just kidding, so I ended up buying this collection off of a guy named William. Uh, William reached out to me, he's like, hey man, I'm looking to kind of get out of the sport and I was interested if you were interested in buying my collections. And for me, it's honestly a lot better for me to be able to do collections now, because a lot of people will be like, hey, do you wanna buy this or do you wanna buy that? And that's fine. But for me, like, it's better to be able to buy entire collections, because one, I can get it for a better price so that I can be able to do videos like this because you'd be surprised, I mean, I guess you probably know, it is expensive buying collection videos. And so every time I buy stuff for a video, it is expensive. And so it's a lot easier for me to do this when I buy entire collections because then I can buy the stuff and then piece it out a little bit um, and it works. But this is William's collection, like I said. So it looks like he's packed everything pretty well. What do we want to start with? Alrighty, up first, let's start with his plate carrier. So we have a black, I don't know if this is Condor or some sort of basic plate here. I'm not seeing any markings on the inside of it. Looks like he was running two pistol mag pouches. And then also looks like he's running like 10 M4 magazines, which is pretty big. Nothing on the back, but I do like these little shoulder pads that he has going on there. Nice little plate here. Oh, bubble wrap city on this bad boy. Alrighty, here we go. Weapon number one. We have an old school. These things are super, super nice. This is a KWA SR-10. This is actually one of the first like scout style rifles I had as far as something that had like a really long barrel. It was not as big as the SR-12, but went SR-7, SR-10, SR-12 for those of you that do not know. But this thing has a super long barrel and I don't know if this is an SR-10 with an SR-12 barrel 
because that boy is long. It's like a 16 inch barrel. He's got a pretty cool little suppressor setup on here as well. It's like one of the AAC style muzzle brakes, I believe. And I'm not exactly sure. I think these are a KAC variant of some sort for the suppressor. I really like these ones that kind of go over the tip. I think it's pretty cool because if you want to like run a suppressor, you can. And if you want to take it off, you can as well. He's running a basic flashlight up here on the front as well. It just looks like a basic little mount. I think he also has a pressure switch on it of some sort. No batteries in this one. Last one had one. And then he's got some of the nice XTM panels as well as a Magpul AFG. Gun actually looks like it's in really good condition. Looks like it's definitely been used a little bit, but it doesn't look like it's been abused. And then he has some sort of basic red dot on here in the front with a little bit of a cover. I really like these KWA guns. These things were like the best gun back in the day. I think when I was like 12. There were like two kids that got these guns and they just blew everything out of the water performance wise. Um, they were just awesome. They shot like 30 rounds a second on 11.1. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, those are so fast back then. Obviously it's nothing now, but it's crazy how airsoft has kind of moved up and everything. It's like stock for a gun to shoot like 25 to 30 feet or rounds per second on full auto now on 11.1. Whereas back then in the day when these first came out, they were like the most overpowered guns. Up second, one of the best guns that you have ever seen in your entire life, the Elite Force SL14 speed loader. Just kidding. For those of you who do not know, this is obviously not a gun. This is one of those speed loaders. These are actually pretty decent. These came out right before like the Odin speed loaders. And so the Odin speed loaders very quickly made these go pretty obsolete because you can just load way quicker. And the package of this compared to the Odin speed loader, you could fit in a double mag pouch, whereas this bad boy you had to like sling on your back or something. Wow, that's loud. You had to like sling it on your back or carry it or carry it in your car. It's a pretty good little system as far as like how much you can hold in here. But like I said, pretty obsolete once the Odin came out. My man included a ton of magazines. Looks like we're rocking six of the KWA K120s. These are the tan ones, which I actually think the tan of the KWAs look pretty good. You guys know that I don't love them the best based on how they feed. And then he's got the stock black one as well as three of, these are like the KWA ERG mags are the ones that basically go all the way up. They look like the P mags on the outside, but they feed until the last round, which works really well on the electric recoil guns. On other guns, they work fine as far as they do feed to the last round and actually push all the BBs up in there, but sometimes these followers can come out, but they look really cool. As I suspected, they actually do not fit this gun. They do not lock in there. I have heard that these ERG mags kind of have trouble fitment, which is super funny that they would have fitment issues in their own KWA guns as far as it just doesn't lock in, whereas like a normal KW mag does. But I know they work in some guns and some people really, really like these magazines. Last but certainly not least, we have his helmet setup. So I believe this is what he was running, his older helmet setup. I think he did upgrade to something new. He's done a pretty cool little snakeskin camo job on this up top, which actually does really help. It's not as shiny once you start adding like that black and tan on here, it is not gonna be nearly as shiny. So a lot of times people will see your helmet and when you're playing airsoft and if you've not done anything like this it's just going to stick out when that sun hits you like a sore thumb if you're trying to hide so this does actually help you a little bit obviously it's airsoft so it doesn't matter a ton but it is helpful for if you're trying to sneak on somebody or go on a flank to have camo and gear that match pretty well and help you blend in with the environment um then he's also got a tmc black mask here as well before finally finishing up with some bbs all right, guys, that's the end of today's video. Thanks so much for sticking all the way in. If you stuck all the way to the end, comment uh, end squad, and I will try and respond to each and every single one of your comments. I know the videos have been a little bit more low-key recently. I'm trying to be consistent with once or twice a week if I can, but like I said, I don't have a ton of stuff um, planned, and I don't have a ton of unboxings that I've ordered, but I promise you guys this spring and summer is going to be absolutely crazy, so if you got to the end, I really appreciate you. I love you guys. This is Malik McElroy, and I'll see you guys soon.